Hi, it's Kirk from Tips and Tricks HQ. A lot of people have been asking how they can import and export data from their WordPress database tables, so I created this screencast to demonstrate how you can easily do that using a utility called phpMyAdmin. Now, phpMyAdmin is usually included with cPanel along with all the other utilities that comes with your web hosting account. You might not have used phpMyAdmin before, because maybe you didn't know it existed, or perhaps it looked too complicated and you didn't want to break anything on your site. But don't worry about that, because I'm going to show you an easy way so you can modify lots of values in your database tables, even when there isn't a formalized way of doing so through the application's interface. For example, when you're using a plugin that doesn't have any import or export functionality, and you need to modify or bulk load lots of data quickly. So before I start showing you how to use phpMyAdmin, I'll set up a scenario for you so you'll have a clear overview of what I'll be demonstrating. I've set up my test WordPress site here and for this demonstration I'll be using the Tips and Tricks WP eStore plugin which I used to create seven products. Now all those products I just gave a price of $27 and for this scenario imagine if I wanted to increase the prices of all my products by 10%. Now, that would be quite easy to do that manually because I only have seven products. So I'll just go into my WordPress admin panel, expand WP eStore, click on manage products. And here I could easily edit these seven products and individually update their prices and that wouldn't be too much hassle. But imagine if I had 100 products or 200 products, this would be rather time consuming. So the easiest way to do this would be if I could export the data from this um, table uh, or this database table, if I could export that data, manipulate the data and change those prices or even any of the other information and then import that data again, that would be a lot faster. And we can actually do that using phpMyAdmin. Now, before you start making changes to your database, it would be a really good idea if you did a full backup of your web hosting account. I've logged into my web hosting account, and here's the familiar cPanel screen. Now, to do a full backup, scroll down and look for an icon that's called Backup Wizard. So I'll just click on Backup Wizard. And since I want to do a backup, I'll click on Backup, and then Full Backup and now you would click on Generate Backup. I've already done a full backup, so to save a bit of time, I did that earlier, and if you click that button now, it will eventually generate a file which is similar to this one here. So go ahead and do that right now. So whenever I'm making changes to databases, I always like having another backup. So once again, I can use the Backup Wizard, and I'm just gonna back up the database that I'm making changes to. So let's find that again. I'll scroll down in cPanel and I'll click on Backup Wizard. Click Backup. And now I want to do a partial backup. So I'll click MySQL Databases. And here you can see all the databases that are on my web hosting account. Now the question is, which of these databases is the one that I want to back up? And you have to really determine that and I'm going to show you now how you can figure out which one is associated with each WordPress installation. So I'll go back to my uh, WordPress installation and this is the test URL that I'm using. It's called developerbytes.com. Now to find out exactly which database is the database that is associated with this um, installation, it's actually this URL and I've installed it into slash WP. I'll go back to cPanel and I'll click back on home. And I'll scroll down and I need to use a utility called File Manager. So I'll right click on that and open that in a new tab. Here's the File Manager. And usually everything will be inside the public HTML folder. That's what, where all your domains will be. So I've got a bunch of domains in here. Here's the one, developerbytes.com. I'll expand that out. And here I've got a few different installations in here. And the one, uh, one that I want is the WP installation. 
and these are all the files in that directory. Now, there's a WordPress configuration file that we can open up, and if we have a look at that file, it'll tell us exactly which database that WordPress installation is using. So the file you have to look for is wp-config.php. That's this file here. And if you right click on that file and click view, you'll be able to see the contents of that file. And pretty much up near the top of the file is this line here where it's got DB name and this is the database name that I want to back up. So it's quadbo5 wrdp2. So I want to do a backup of that one now. So I can close this window and I'll go back to cPanel and we'll go back to the backup wizard and click backup. And we're going to do a partial backup, MySQL databases again. Here's all the databases and this is the one that I want to back up. Quadbo5 WRDP2. So I'll just click on that. And it's downloaded. So at least now, that's great. I have a backup of that database. So no matter what changes I make, I can always reload. Okay, great. We've completed all of our preparation and we now have a full backup of our entire web hosting account. And we also have a backup of the database we're going to be modifying. What we want to do next is export the data out of a specific table inside of that database. So here we are in cPanel, and what we want to do is scroll down until we find an icon called PHP My Admin, and we're going to use that to do the export. So here it is, PHP My Admin, and I'll right click on that and open that in a new tab. Okay, here's what PHP My Admin looks like. And on the left hand side of the screen, there's all the databases in my web hosting account. So the database that we want to work with is this one here. It was that Quadbo 5 WRDP2. I can either click on that here, or if I click on the databases tab, I can click on WRDP2 here. Okay, so here's a list of all the tables in the database that we just selected. So what we need to do now is we need to find the table which contains all of that product data so we can export the, the data and manipulate it. So let's have a look for a table that seems to make sense. Now we know that the data is stored in an eStore table. So we'll have a look down here. And here we go, we've got a whole bunch of tables here called eStore something. Now, I want the one with products, if it, one of them said products in it, but it's definitely not this one coupon or customer, but it's probably this one down the bottom here, eStore table. So if I click on this first icon here, this is a browse icon, and if I click on that, it will show us all the data inside this table. So I'll click on that, and here we go. It looks like we've got a few products in here. That's exactly what we want. Here's the six products that I created earlier. They're all priced at $27. This is definitely the table that we want to export. So I'll scroll up to the top and you can see here we're in the right area. This is the machine, Quadbo 5 WRDP2, that's the database, and this one here, this is the table, eStore table. So when I click on this export tab, that's the data that's going to be exported from this table. Okay, now we can export the data in a bunch of different formats. The one that I'm going to choose is CSV format. It's actually comma separated value format. And what we want to change here is, um, the default is fields are terminated by a semicolon. I'm going to delete that semicolon and type a comma. And the next thing I'm going to change is, I'm going to check this, tick this box on. Put field names in the first row. That's so we know what every the field um, what every field is, so we can change the data. The next thing we want to do is I'm going to select this radio button, dump all rows. We can leave everything else the same, and I'll click the go button. And we've now downloaded that CSV file. So I'll open up the downloads area. And this is the file that was just downloaded. 
eStoreTable.csv. I'll open up that file and let's just have a look at it. And here is all the data. So you can see the first row, it's wrapped around a bit because it's a very long row. But we can see here are all the field names. And here is the first row. And then here is the second row. So what we could actually do now, we could actually go in here and manually adjust these prices in here. But an easier way to do that is to load this data into a spreadsheet and do the manipulation there. Now a spreadsheet that you can use which is free and actually